The National Broadcasting Company presents Bride and Groom. Hello. Welcome to Bride and Groom. Today we're going to meet a young man whose courage I certainly admire. He walked up to a lady he didn't know and he said, Mrs. Black, my name is Sam. I'm the boy your daughter's going to marry. Well, Mrs. Black didn't say much about it, but her daughter said plenty. You see, it was the first time she'd heard about this idea. <laughs> and right now, I'd like you to meet the young man who knew what he wanted, and Mrs. Black's daughter, too. Now, I introduce Miss Marilyn Black and Mr. Sam Glassman, both from Philadelphia, where Marilyn is a third grade teacher and Sam is studying electrical engineering at Penn State. And now that we've met you, supposing you tell us how you met, when and where. It was in a North Murray student dance party. I was chatting with four young men when Sam came walking in, put his cigarette out, and asked me for a dance. He asked me for all the dances I had left and uh, took me home. We chatted for several hours about everything we could think of, about marriage, ideals. Sam told me about himself. Although he didn't actually propose then, he told me to know you is to love you. And this was the very first time you met him? Mm -hmm. How long ago was this? This was February 24th, 1953. About a year and a half. Now, mm -hmm. Did you think at this time that this was a sincere compliment from Sam or just a smooth line that maybe he gave all the girls? Well, ordinarily, I would have thought it was a very smooth line, but considering the sincerity with which it was said, I decided to wait and see and decide later. Very smart attitude, because when you see what happened, you know it was sincere because, well, only a little over a year later, you two got married, or are going to today. Sam, granted that you were quite sincere, tell me, how could you be sure so soon? Well, when I first met Marilyn, I knew she was the girl for me. Uh, she met everything that I had for ideal uh, for a wife. And I naturally uh, went after her with uh, all the energy I had. Uh, after our first date, as a matter of fact, uh, I told her mother that Marilyn didn't have to look for a man any longer because she was going to marry me. Oh, dear, and I understand that Mrs. Black wasn't the only flabbergasted one. No, I was quite taken aback also. I told Sammy that we couldn't possibly be in love so soon. We had to see one another in a variety of situations. Very smart. Um, Sam thought otherwise, but agreed to wait. Mm -hmm. How long was this wait, Sam? Much too long, John. I'm sure, whatever length of time it was, but... Marilyn went to Europe uh, for five weeks uh, last July, came back in August, and um, uh, after she came back, after I had asked her not to go because I was so madly in love with her, uh, I asked her to marry me again, and uh, she refused. Uh, and, of course, I didn't know that her mind was still 3,000 miles away and it was too sudden after her return. But uh, we did bump into each other accidentally at camp one day in the Poconos, and we, we lived all our joys together for 24 hours, but we still broke up. And you were separated? And it wasn't until after six weeks that uh, we got back together again, and then I proposed to her again. And this time it took. <laughs> after six weeks, Marilyn, what brought you together again? Well, I had taken some pictures when we were at camp and promised to send them to Sam uh, when they were developed. Uh, I kept them for that length of time. They were my last tie with him. And finally, when I could wait no longer, I sent them. When I did, he called me and we agreed to go out again. Have one more chance? Sort of, something like that. Mm-hmm. And that was the time? That was when he proposed again and I decided I could wait no longer and said yes. That six-week separation helped you make up your mind? Definitely. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're going to see that you have no further delays. For here are your match keepsake wedding rings that you two will wear through all these happy years ahead. And right now, Rabbi Maxwell W. Farber of the Congregation Emanuel in Philadelphia is here to conduct your wedding service and Phil Hanna to sing your love song. I pledge this now to you I shall be always true And like our marriage band our love be without an end. So on our wedding day, I hold your hand and say that, darling, come what may, our hearts will always blend. We'll know the meaning of blessed eternal
ברוכים הבואים בשם אדוני, ברחנוכם מבייס אדוני. Blessed may you be, who come in the name of the Lord. We bless you out of the house of the Lord. May he who is mighty, blessed and great above all, send his abounding blessings to you the bride and you the bridegroom. May a dear al hakol, may baruch al hakol, may gadol al hakol, who ye borech, echasan vahakalo. Baruch ato Adonai Eloheinu melech olam, Bore pri ha gofer. Baruch ato Adonai Eloheinu melech olam, Asher kitshanu b'mitzvo salvetsivano al ha-arayos, V'osa lano eso aruso, V'hetil lano es hanesu os lano, Al yedei chupa v'kidushin, Baruch ato Ato Adonai, Mekadei Shamo Yisroel, Ayadei Chuba V'Kidushin. As you are about to drink from the same cup of wine, so may you, under God's guidance and protection, in ever-deepening love and devotion to each other, draw happiness, contentment, and felicity from the cup of life. And may you thereby find life's joys doubly gladdening, its bitterness sweetened, and all things hallowed by true companionship and love. free will and consent. Take Marilyn Black standing here at your side to be your lawfully wedded wife and do you promise to love, to honor, and to cherish her all the days of your life? I do. Marilyn Black, do you of your own free will and consent? Take Sam Glassman standing here at your side to be your lawfully wedded husband and do you promise to love, to honor, and to cherish him I all do. the days of your life? Look at your bride and repeat these words after me. Hare. Hare. At. At. Mekudeshes. Mekudeshes. Li. Li. Betabas. Betabas. Zo. Zo. Kedas. Kedas. Moshe. Moshe. V'Yisroel. V'Yisroel. Look at the bride and repeat these words after me. By the symbol of this ring. By the symbol of this ring. I consecrate you unto me. I consecrate you unto me. As my husband. As my husband. As by these rings which are being given and taken between you, you symbolize your marriage bond. May its meaning sink deep into your hearts and bind your lives together in mutual love and affection. And may you, in increasing loyalty and devotion to each other, establish a home in our country that will be filled with a spirit of happiness, harmony, and contentment, and where the blessings of God may ever abide. Amen. Amen. Now as you bow your heads, we invoke God's benediction upon you. Yevorecha hu Adonai v'yishmarecha. Yoer Adonai pano v'lecha v'chuneka. Yeso Adonai pano v'lecha v'yoseim lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance unto you and grant you the blessing of peace in your heart and in your new home, now and throughout all the days of your united married life. Amen. Now that the words have been spoken, it is my privilege as rabbi to declare you, Sam, and you, Marilyn, husband and wife before God and man.
Also tough kiss your wife. Well, there's a happy twosome. Soon honeymoon word bound, and you know, they're going to be guests of honor of, of the uh, New York Hotel Association and, and the uh, Mr. Manager Prusoff, who is the general manager of their honeymoon spot, and they're going to drive there in this beautiful 1954 Pontiac. A wonderful ride and a fine car. And the first thing they're going to do at their arrival at their honeymoon destination, the Glenmere, I think is probably head for the beach and spend several sun drenched days there. Of course, I'd like to see them alternate that beach day with a golf day because it'd be pretty near impossible to keep me away from a golf course as one at least of such beauty as this Glenmere. But it's no secret, Marilyn and Sam are going to find it pretty near impossible to forget a single moment of the marvelous fun-filled days that they're going to have at the wonderful Glenmere for a fantastically wonderful honeymoon. Hey, and Bill. Sam would like to know, when do we leave? Congratulations, <laughs> Sam. That's a logical question. But first, uh, uh, I'd just like to know one thing. You can't leave until after you've uh, shaken hands with lots of your friends who are attending a reception right now. And you certainly don't want to leave until after you've seen some of the wedding gifts we have for you. Right. Well, how about a Westinghouse laundromat, John? Sounds fine. And it promises to wash, double rinse, and damp dry everything from your sturdiest to your filliest clothes and do it economically, too. And that promise is as good as gold because you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. All right. Reed and Barton tosses its hat in the ring as America's favorite sterling silver. And I see your favorite among the many Reed and Bat Barton patterns is classic rose. Well, I've been counting the seconds till I could say, here are your Ben Russ watches. Each of you will have a handsome Ben Russ citation. What a wonderful way to time the many happy hours ahead. Yes, that Ben Russ, Merrill, will show you just how much time you can save when your house cleaning companion is a Hoover vacuum cleaner. And that Hoover is accompanied by the famous 12 fast working attachments. Now, don't be disturbed by the thought of cooking three meals a day for an endless number of years because you're going to have a tap and gas range. It's right here, and it's accompanied by a wonderfully reassuring slogan Good food just happened when you're cooking on Add a tap. Add to that a bridal shower of fine Jurgens and Woodbury Cosmetics, plus a talking motion picture film of your day on bride and groom. And that's our contribution to the happiness and success of your new home at 1301 McGee Avenue in Philadelphia. Well, so far this week, the course of true love has not run smoothly at all. Yesterday, a lieutenant told us about competing with a whole stable full of problems. Today, Sam told her wanting to sweep Marilyn off her feet, but Marilyn refused to be swept. Tomorrow's couple, however, were determined that the course of true love could run smoothly. This doesn't mean they never had ups and downs, but only that they found a way to solve their problems, which should be an inspiration to every young couple in love. We hope that you'll join us tomorrow, same time, same NBC stations. <laughs>